My role. Oh. That's not nice. <laughs> no. But sorry. Now. It's okay. No. On the other side. It's funny, my son got brought home from school. So Yeah, yeah. I'm just uh you know, I've been like so careful and it was just like the zinger of it all, but yeah. I wish I got it like dancing at a club or something. <laughs> <laughs> Oh boy, that was worth it. <laughs> was it though? So, so were you actually were you actually were you actually down in bed, etc.? My um uh no. I felt sick for like two days and so okay. so we're all boosted and vaccinated and everything like that. So yeah. That's good. That's good. There's so many clubs in town too, Laura. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm in, I'm in Washington, D.C. right now, so I do have access there to you clubs. Go. You know? I mean, yeah. that well, now's your way, moment. That would have been way more worth it than being like, oh, you took your mask off at lunch a little too close to someone. That's how we all got sick. Awesome. <laughs> Anyways, we're recording, so we can stop. Now. Yeah, right. <clears throat> I'm ready whenever you guys are. I, All right. I hadn't, I hadn't heard, heard from Fletcher. Go for it. Okay. Well, welcome everyone. This is the Amherst Conservation Commission meeting, Wednesday, February 9th, 2020. Um, I think the first item on our agenda is comments from me, maybe. Um, yep. My only comment is, Laura, I don't think we've been in the same meeting since you agreed to do the Community Preservation Act Committee. So I just wanted to formally thank you for that. Uh, thank you for making time because I'm sure it's just time you're making. I'm sure it's not extra time you have. Um, so thank you for doing that. And we look here, I look forward to like learning along with you about everything going on over there. Cool. Um, and I'm sure Michelle and Leroy, you guys have been working on the bylaws. Um, or if you haven't, that's cool too. But if you have, that's another thing I know is going on and probably expanding in bandwidth. And I really we really appreciate it. So thank you for taking the time for that. Um, and I am not gonna be able to be at the next meeting. Um, and it sounds like Leroy is gonna be able to be here and lead the meeting just so you guys know. Um, so the next time I'll see you is sometime in early March, the first March meeting. That's what I had. Dave? Sure, just a couple of quick updates. Um, speaking of CPA, so you know, Laura is joining two thirds of the way through the process, joining that committee. They've already made their recommendations. Um, I attended a meeting on Monday morning of the finance committee where the chair, Sarah Marshall of the CPA committee made a presentation to the finance committee on, I wanna say there's like 16 or 17 projects. I, I kind of lost track, but uh, in the various categories, housing, affordable housing, recreation, open space and um, historic preservation. And so they're working their way through the process. Um, what will happen is the FinCom will, you know, they had some really good questions for a lot of the, um, uh, for Sarah Marshall, myself, and Sean Mangano, our finance director. And then those projects uh, will make, hopefully be as a package recommended to the town council. And then the town council will hopefully vote them. They'll have more questions, I'm sure but they'll be voted on as a package as part of the overall uh, FY23 budget. You may recall on the open space front, there were two uh, projects put forth. One was money for Hickory Trails, Hickory Ridge Trails, and that request is for $150,000. And the second uh, request was for a general trails support um, uh, amount, which was $50,000. So. I'm really excited to move those forward. It seems like a lot of money, but it really doesn't go that far when you actually get right into permitting, bridges, bog bridging, depending on the surface you choose. And Hickory is a very big piece of property as we know. So keep keep your eye on that. It'll probably be reported in the newspaper. And, and um, you know, again, I'm, I'm feeling pretty optimistic that that goes forward. The other related thing is that the the, his, um, the historic interpretive trail that was proposed uh, for above Puffer's Pond um, uh, along the Cushman Brook, this is the project that Meg Gage and others from North Amherst brought forward. 
that did get recommended by the um, by the um, um, CPA committee. And, and it's only part of the project, it's really the research part of the project. Um, recall they're looking at um, historic structures, mill structures along the Cushman Brook. I think it's a great project. Um, and I'd really like us to cue in on it later this spring. I talked to Aaron about this the other day. Um, there's definitely been kind of manipulation um, uh, of some of those mill sites which I wasn't really aware of. People are kind of borrowing the stones from some of those mill sites. There's been people up there with metal detectors and these are really town resources. And so we may in the interim figure out a way to at least put up some, some uh, tasteful signs up there that discourage people from messing with these historic mill sites. And uh, we'll talk more about that as we get you know through winter and, and do something up there that at least puts people on alert that some people may, may not know. They like to make a dam. I don't know if you know where the dam is, where everybody swims their dog, but they're actually pulling stones from one of the mill sites and moving them over. And I think we want to just discourage that if we can. So anyway. How, how about how about an article in the press? Yeah, we could easily do something like that and, and make, make education and awareness part of it. For sure. That's a great idea, Larry. Just um, put up a sign and make them feel guilty. Yeah. Dave, Dave Downer, don't do that. No, um, not you. Just say the concom or something says, don't do right. this. I will definitely put it all on you. All. I don't. I don't want to be the bad guy. I, I do that too much. Hickory. <laughs> so speaking of Hickory Ridge, we are on the one yard line. I assure you, we. It is just down to the wire, and the attorneys doing their thing at eleven fifty nine. Um, we we have payments ready. We have deeds signed and various documents signed. So we are this close and we just gotta, you know, have those attorneys do their last little dance and then we'll close and, and we'll do some press on the property. Lots of people out there using it for cross country skiing, hiking, bird watching, you name it. So we'll get that going. And um, has, we'll has, your, has your blockage worked out as far as things like snowmobiles? Uh, I have not seen any uh, evidence of snowmobiles out there this winter, but I, you know, haven't been out there in, in a little bit, so I've not seen any. But we will. We have signs ready to go. You know, that'll say basically town-owned property. Here are the the you know at least the temporary rules and regulations. There'll be for the time being. There'll be more town rules and regulations. They'll be similar to conservation commission regulations, but. In all honesty, we don't know which section of the property yet you all, the commission, will have care, custody, and control over. That will be decided at in the future once we do kind of the master planning process. Clearly, it'll be the riparian zone, you know, the areas near the river, that kind of thing, but we don't know the extent of the 150 acres, how many acres will be under the care, custody, and control of the, of the commission. What kind of what kind of interest is there in their commercial development? Uh, well, you can the best I, I think the best answer to that, Larry, is if you go on the town's website and you go about two thirds of the way down, they have engage Amherst, and there's five or six projects that we're engaged in right now, and um, we've had over a hundred um, uh, comments uh, about Hickory on there, and they range from you know I think I mentioned this before a zip line, a BMX bike trail, hiking trails, an amphitheater, um, affordable housing, um, you know, um, brew pub, you, you name it. So yeah. Definitely one of the strongest themes is for the town to look at the clubhouse area and the parking lot area for some sort of affordable housing. Senior housing has been raised, but that's definitely coming through as a strong theme. Yeah. I would say the strongest theme is protect the property, protect the river, protect the re natural resource areas, wetlands, vernal pools, et cetera, um, and make a trail system that everybody can enjoy north to south and east to west and connect to the village center. Is, so is, that, is the 10th fairway in, in the area or might be commercial? Oh, Larry, I am not a golfer. Well, I'm a very bad uh, golfer. So well, the 10th tenth, the tenth is the one that's right along, right along Pomeroy beyond the clubhouse toward Hadley. Toward the west? Um, it very quickly um, 
if you look at the topography there, there's a little room there for something, but not a lot. It quickly gets into floodplain, and it's also wet. it's also wet. There's no doubt about yeah. that. It's already it's been wet already this this last week and a half. Yeah, yeah if you if you looked at what happened with the rain and and the snow melt and the ice uh, flows last week, it was it was pretty covered last last weekend. Yeah. Also, there's a lot of estimated and priority habitat out there, but Aaron and some of the planning staff and I are working on all the different layers of mapping. And we've made a lot of progress over the last two months. So we'll we'll begin to share that with you all. And clearly you, you know, a representative or two of the commission will be asked to be more part of that um, planning process as we move forward. Um, so that's Hickory. And then uh, two other quick things, we are moving forward with the uh, hiring of an assistant land manager. Um, we are very close to, to, to making an offer on that. So it'll be great to get some help for Brad. He's been without any help for a couple of months. We'll get somebody trained up and ready for the summer field season. I'm actually meeting with Brad tomorrow, more, uh, tomorrow afternoon where we'll talk about summer projects. What are some of those, just to give you a preview, we would very much like to make progress on replacing the Amethyst Brook uh, Conservation Area Bridge, you know, the one that's been out for um, four or five years. Uh, we have funding for that, thanks in large part. There's some of the funding coming from private donors and Aaron's been working on that and the Kestrel Trust has contributed. So we believe we have enough money to replace that bridge. We're also looking at the KC Trail Bridge over near where Jen lives. Jen probably knows that trail quite well. and. We're not happy with the temporary condition there, but we really need to replace that bridge. So those are kind of the two big lifts, I think. I know Amethyst is gonna happen this summer. The other one is a big ticket item when it comes to cost, the, uh, the KC Trail Bridge off of Southeast Street. So in, in the short term, we've gotta make that safer. In the long term, we really need to replace it. So those would be the two big lifts among other smaller projects we do with our with our, our, our limited staff. So that's just kind of a quick preview and I'll, we'll have more. And I really want to invite Brad and his new land manager back to see you. I missed that meeting, but I think they had a very good conversation with you and did a, a PowerPoint for you on, on the projects they did. So, so those are the quick updates. Any, happy to take any questions on those or any other things you might be seeing out there. Um, Were you able to find um, for the Amethyst Brook Bridge, what are you using? To, did you remember where there was like the whole back and forth about getting the really long telephone poles? Did you yes. find a solution to that? Yes, we have found 55 foot telephone poles. Oh. We are, if we haven't ordered them already, they're close to being ordered. We have the funding for them and we will be using three 55 foot long telephone poles. So if we need help lifting them from the parking lot to the brook, we will call on all of you. That was my next question. How are you going to get those 55 foot poles? Aaron's been working on that a little. Brad's been working on that. We're going to need some pretty heavy equipment to move those. Yeah. Yeah. There you go, Jen. Um, but yeah, so we are we are working on that. Yeah. Did you? Are they, are they, they're brand new poles. Did you actually bought like brand new poles? Yeah, we yeah we we had to buy them. We we did ask EverSource, and that kind of led to a dead end. So. Yep. We ended up, you know, we're going to buy them. I, I want to say they're in the order of five or six thousand dollars, something like that. Is that right. about right, Aaron? Something For the like three that. of them, they're yeah. almost 8K. Yeah. 8K. Yeah. There we go. So. Cool. Great. But half of it is shipping cost, probably. <laughs> yeah, they only bring them to the to the location where they're being dropped off, and that we yeah, have to take won't. it from there. So that's the challenge. They won't take them to the bridge. They won't, they won't actually even unload them <laughs> we're gonna need a draft we're gonna ask barry roberts if we can use his draft horses and they can pull them up there. <laughs> the sustainable way to do it we actually do that up at usgs gauge sites up in northern new england and maine we use draft horses a lot yep. to bring stuff in and out hmm. it's for sure it's definitely a not thing a not a crazy idea we've got yeah. draft horses at uh, amethyst farm and we've got them right. at um at uh, Barry Roberts Farm on Bay Road. Yeah, it's relatively yeah. low impact. Yeah, maybe we look into that, Aaron. That would be a fun thing for people to observe as well. So. Hmm. That's a new one, but hey. The other one is uh, wait for I a like spring, it. <laughs> wait for a spring flood and float them down. That's also kind of a main, a main New Hampshire style thing to do, but they do it. 
Okay. Amethyst Brick, like you might end up with a bridge in a slightly different location. Right. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. it would save in, save install costs. Yeah. One or two might get stuck, but right. Keep in mind that the commission did you did we did permit that bridge a couple of years ago. I think the, the permit is still valid. If we have to make any changes or propose any changes, we'll bring those back to you. I hope within the next 60 days. Uh, if we if we need to amend that permit and or change anything with the design, so so those are the big. That's what's happening. How much longer is the permit valid for the KC Trail Bridge? That was about the same time. I, I would have to defer to Aaron. I don't know. Okay. You, you don't. You shouldn't know off the top of your head. That design, but... frankly, that design is probably going to change because it's we... all collapsed in more yeah. since we did that. Yeah. And we've had an engineer look at it and it's it's that one's more complex than meets the eye for sure. So that might be a great place for a zip line. Maybe we do a zip line yeah. and you go over the brook on a zip line. That would be the creative thing to do. Yep. Nobody's yeah. touching. Nobody's touching. A barge, a barge on a pulley. Yeah. Ooh. Wow. Mm -hmm. We can get really creative here if we're gonna start doing that stuff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right well thanks dave it all sounds good very busy Th thank you for keeping us on in line on everything um all right if nobody else has, has any questions for dave um i'm looking at the next item on the agenda sweet alice looks like oh land man review and approval of minutes one do minutes Aaron? well i we have a couple of people in attendance. I was kind of hoping that we could maybe burn through the items that they came to talk to us for sure. the, the first one being that um, application, the land use application uh, mm -hmm. for Adventure East. Um, and then um, we have an application um, for it's sort of like an informal discussion for a property at 21 um, East Hadley Road, and then um, the last one is the UMass one. And then once we get those out of the way, we can burn through the other business okay. items, if that works for you guys. Yeah, sorry, I didn't have the participant side bar thing open, so I now see them. So that makes sense. Um, so I believe Brian Pearson is here for the Adventure East application. He might be able to kind of give a verbal um, explanation of the project, and then we can talk about that. Okay, I just want to make him to a panelist. Okay, hopefully we will see him. There he is. Hi, Brian. Hey, good evening. Thanks for giving us priority on your agenda. No problem. If you wouldn't mind just introducing yourself and giving us kind of a three minute version of your application, that would be great. Sure, so I'm Brian Pearson. I'm founder of Adventure East. We're a company in Sunderland uh, founded in 2021. And we do outdoor experiences here in the Valley from uh, paddling, hiking, fishing, biking, uh, ski touring, cross country skiing, all sorts of outdoor stuff. Um, we're working with Amherst College on a winter uh, programming schedule for the next four weekends. And one of the properties we'd like to use is in Amherst and um, it's the Sweet Alice Trailhead. And we plan to bring groups there if approved um, on Saturdays and Sundays, um, starting this weekend through March 5th and 6th. The dates are all in the application. Uh, we'd bring a group in the morning. We would bring another group in the afternoon. Our groups are topped out at 12 people, and we'll have a guide with each group. OK, that's great. Thanks. So I'm just looking in the application. Commissioners, any questions off the, off the top here? So what would you be doing at, uh, at Sweet Alice? Um, so we're going to do a, about a one hour loop trek um, up to the Robert Frost Trail and then down the trolley to the Brook Bank and um, back to Kestrel and, and then the parking area. Okay, and you'll be just shuttling people. So it's only one 
parking. It's one spot. van. So, yeah. you know, yeah. and, you know, depending on parking there, I guess Kestrel has an event on Saturday, but otherwise, um, Kestrel said we can use their access the rest of the days as well. So, there shouldn't be any issue with parking there with our vehicle. So normally this would be a snow ex, ex, it, 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 a snow process, but you don't have any snow now, so you're just going to go up and walk. It's probably um, pretty icy, depending on how packed down it is. But we have spikes for everyone, so it should be, you know, safer than going without spikes. But yes, we wish there was snow, but you never know these days. And out after dark, it looks like, and time four p.m. I mean, out before dark. Sorry. Yes. Okay. So uh, my question is though for us about the um, for-profit part. Do we? What's the uh, protocol there? Somebody. The great. That's yeah, a great we, question. We, we bring it up every time this yeah. comes up. Every and time. Then, yeah, and then we say, "Oh, we should come up with a policy." But what's the pre what's the precedent we've used? Before? So remember, we've had yeah. this discussion. Yeah. So so guys, I just if. Yeah, let, <laughs> let Dave let Dave jump in. Go ahead. So, um, so yeah, it's a great question. We we really don't we don't have a policy on this. Um, the next discussion we're going to have after this is is an introduction to something that Aaron and I have been talking about, and and we are poised to to kind of work through and present to you at your next couple of meetings, which is really kind of a comprehensive. Uh, land use policy that will cover things like for-profit use of town conservation land, agricultural use of conservation land, um, rules and regulations for the use of conservation land, weddings, um, you know, uh, fundraisers, etc. So short of that, we I don't think there is a consistent policy that you can follow tonight. Um, it's been kind of a piecemeal thing through the years. So I would suggest that I believe in, in Brian's um, application and in Aaron's communication with Brian. Um, Brian, I believe you had mentioned that when you use land of say the, you know, a land trust, the trustees of reservations or something, that you make a voluntary uh, donation to trail maintenance or something like that. So I think that's what we put out to Brian in, in lieu of a policy that said X. Mm -hmm. We were suggesting that because we don't have that to be consistent that perhaps the program made a, a, a modest donation to our trail fund, which then can go back into trail maintenance and bridges and, and you know, erosion control and things of that sort along bridges. So was, was that a, a reasonable um, uh, approach, Brian, that would be consistent with what you do with other landowners? Absolutely, sure. That, that would work fine. And, you know, the, the average there that I put is $25 per person. Um, and typically we're doing uh, 20%. Um, so like a $5 contribution per person. And we build that into our uh, fees um, and provide that as a support to the um, landowners where we're given access. Cool. Or maybe like some, yeah volunteer time or something. Great. The yeah. other question um, I would have is about sort of liability issues. Um, like if the, the company has liability insurance and how that would apply to the town of Amherst. I know in the past, um, you know, for recurring events um, or even one-time events like weddings, we've required um, liability coverage. So I don't know if that's something um, that we should talk about as well. Maybe, show Brian, insurance? maybe Brian could say more about what you've done in other situations, because I think we would want proof of, of liability insurance and probably having the town um, listed as an, an additional insured for those dates. Is that, again, a reasonable uh, uh, request, Brian? Yes, very typical. We have a general liability policy and we can provide a certificate with the town as an um, additional insured. Hmm. The one other comment that I would make, um, this is just, this is an FYI for everybody on the on the call, as well as for Brian. 
that we are dealing with an emergency situation um, down at 37 Bay Road, which is the driveway access coming into Kestrel Land Trust. There's a failed culvert um, under the driveway that has a huge sinkhole under it. Right now there's a steel plate covering that sinkhole. Um, and we've been working with Kestrel Land Trust to come up with a design and a permitting process to replace that culvert in early March. Um, again, it wouldn't impact um, weekend use of the trail system, um, but uh, just so that it may, uh, there may be other site uh, impacts if that work is happening in early March. I doubt it will impact these dates, but just to make sure that um, everybody is aware of that, um, that that work might be happening um, in early March. Okay, thanks for that information. That That's below where the trail comes into the driveway, right? It's closer to Bay Road. It's between the trail and Bay Road. Right, so if you, if you park at the parking area um, where the, the kiosk is located, there's a trail that can bring you in to the site and you won't even cross the culvert. It, it won't even impact um, folks walking in from that direction. But if anybody was to try to drive down the driveway when that work is going on, it will be, there'll be work going on. So they, you know, if a shuttle bus was thinking that they would be able to drive in to drop people off, say at the Kestrel Land Trust headquarters, they wouldn't be able to do that. Um, so I would just recommend that for the shuttle that you drop people in the parking lot and then have people walk, um, walk over on the established trail to get on the trail system. Sure, no problem. Okay, commissioners, any other questions? Dave and Aaron, thanks for getting ahead of us on kind of a land use policy plan. <laughs> um, otherwise, if nobody else has any questions, I think with, while accounting for the things we've mentioned, a donation to the town in support of trail maintenance, et cetera, and making sure that we have liability coverage, I think I've, I'm comfortable moving forward with approving this application. Does anyone have any outstanding concerns? Okay, do we vote, Aaron? Yeah, I would make a motion to approve it. Make a motion to approve the uh, land use application for, oh, what Adventure East? East. Adventure East on the dates that are on the uh, application with the uh, said um, conditions. No, second. <laughs> All right, voice vote. Um, Larry, I was going to say with the stated requirements about yes. Leroy, aye. Michelle, aye. Fletcher, aye. Laura, aye. And I'm an aye. Thank you, Brian. Thanks, everyone. Good luck. I hope you guys have good conditions out there. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was up on the right. Seven Sisters on Sunday and it was just like clear ice everywhere. I mean, it's awesome with the micro spikes. It's actually kind of fun, but ice. Yeah. Aaron, if you could maybe follow up with Brian just in terms of, you know, he could make the donation payable to the town of Amherst Conservation Department trails account. Okay. When the time comes, he could just do that. And that way it goes into a gift account and not the general fund. Okay. Because the general fund, it just gets absorbed and we want this specifically to go to trails. Okay. Is our next agenda item 21 East Hadley Road, is that um, Lance? Yes, yes right. it is, yep. So if we're ready to move on, I will, Lance, I'm gonna promote you to a panelist so we can see and hear you. I just say one thing real briefly. If, um, that's I didn't know that there was a trails um, like account, trail maintenance account. Mm -hmm. So that is something. I guess you guys are probably working on the the land use policy, but that's something. If everybody if moving forward, just everything goes to that account. That'd be great. As an example. Yeah, but we we actually if we do more for profit stuff on. Yeah. Conservation lands. Yeah, I agree. We have a number of. Right. We have a number of accounts, you know, CPA accounts, but also gift accounts, 
mm. for various projects, for um, for bridges, for mitigation, for you know Eversource. Um, you know, so there's a number of accounts that we can we can draw from as long as they're consistent with the purpose of the of the account. Well, that's useful to us to, for us to know about so that we can point things at that, those. All right. All right, team, moving forward. Um, informal approval sought 21 East Hadley Road. I brought in Lance Curley. Hi, Lance, we can see you. Hi, everybody. We can hear you, great. Um, if you wouldn't mind just introducing yourself and giving us a, a three minute version of your an informal approval question, <laughs> that would be great. Sure, happy to. My name's Lance Curley, and I'm one of the principals at Classic Colonial Homes. Uh, we're a residential design build firm based in Florence. And we're currently underway with a historic renovation of the family residence at uh, 21 East Hadley Road. And uh, we've been progressing steadily through various stages of demolition uh, under the watchful guise of the inspection department, mostly David Cody. And uh, we reached a point where we needed to make some structural repairs to the northeastern corner of the, of the building. Um, and uh, there's a 100 amp electrical service currently serving the house, which will be upgraded to a 200 amp service. And it happens to be located in a portion of the structure at the corner um, that is kind of in conflict with some of the structural repairs that we are trying to make to secure the frame. And so um, I reached out to Erin Jock to get her take on it and explain to her that this is a bit of a time sensitive situation um, where we're kind of in the midst of demolition and trying to adequately shore the um, building during the time of year that it is. And um, our electrician is uh, capable of providing temporary electric to the house for a period of between three and five months, we guess. Um, and we are requesting permission to dig a hole that um, would be in the northwest or northeastern corner off the house in that image that you were just sharing, uh, which we sent to Aaron today upon her request. Um, that uh, is the, the approximate location of where that temporary post would be set in the ground. And um, that's what this is about. <laughs> Thank you. Um, can you remind me what, what is the resource? Is there like a stream or? Maybe? Across the road is the Fort River. Okay. And that's there's the also, okay. there's also a wetland in the back of the property as well. Okay. Okay. So this um, is within 200 feet of the Fort River. Yes. Yep. Okay. And if I could just um, add a little context to this, um, in my initial conversation with Lance, um, we, there, there was, so there's, there is also proposed to be a small mudroom addition um, in the sort of central, if you can see my cursor, this off the central um structure there like kind of in this corner and they do need to put in a um a footing there for that addition um but i had spoken previously with lance that they're going to be filing a request for determination for that um they were also considering some um, landscaping improvements and um so my suggestion was to file a request for determination for all of those sort of exterior improvements at once. Um, but this temporary electrical service to me kind of seemed like something relatively minor that the commission could just give a verbal approval on. Um, and then once they file their RDA, they can move forward with, um, with the filing for the other work. Um, I mean, I, 
to be honest, like seeing the photos, I do see that it looks like there's been a little bit of exterior work going on there. Like, um, I don't know if any trees have been removed or there's been any ground disturbance there, but it does look a little bit like, um, I mean, maybe it's just lawn and it's because it's frozen conditions. And I don't know when these photos were taken, but um, I don't know, Lance, if you could speak to that, like if any, if any trees have been removed recently or any, um, there been any sort of excavation on the site at all? In the uh, no excavation that I know of. The homeowner did do some tree and bush removal around the perimeter of the house prior to us starting. Okay. Um, and the facade that's wrapped with plywood at the base is essentially covering up a gaping hole around the perimeter of the building where we've been jacking up posts on the interior of the structure and parging the interior foundation wall to strengthen it, adding rebar. Um, there's a number of kind of structural repairs that we've been kind of tackling, but they're within the boundaries of the building. Okay. I mean, my, so I guess my only comment then is um, that it might make sense to do just a, a line of erosion controls um, at the limit of disturbance on the river side for the entire length of the property um, from north to south, um, just to make sure that until that area is stabilized, that there's some protection there to keep material from moving into the road and across. I, I don't think it's going to happen, but I think it's also just in, an important um, environmental uh, control feature to have on the site um, sure. and, and just keep it in place because you're gonna be filing an RDA anyway. So um, yeah, that'd be my recommendation. But okay. I, I don't have any problems with them putting in the temporary um, service whatsoever. Um, and they're gonna be filing an RDA um, in you know the the not so distant future they already have a um, wordsmith out there doing the delineation so um, I'm pretty comfortable with the board um, moving forward this with this I don't have any uh, comments or concerns on it yeah my take is that I'm not concerned about putting a post in there for the temper temporary electrical especially if you guys are going to come back with an RDA um, I agree with Aaron's point about uh, a little bit of erosion control, just because we're going to have an extended mud season, it's looking pretty bad. Um, so it could only help. Um, but I also should say thank you for taking the time to come before us um, now so that we know what's going on. Um, yeah. It'll help the RDA process be more smooth. Um, so yeah, unless, I, so I guess that's just to say, um, I feel comfortable moving forward on this path. Commissioner, does anyone have any questions or concerns? Okay, so Aaron, is this a motion? Right. Oh, Dave. Oh, I'm sorry. I see your hands now, Dave. No, I, I think this is a great outcome, Aaron. You know, and I, I completely agree with with getting some erosion control control on the eastern southeastern um, property line. Um, I would say I think it's also an opportunity through the RDA to maybe um, uh, do some education with the owners because I I do think a lot of trees were removed from that property. And again, I'm not faulting anybody, but I think the average homeowner, landowner, property owner wouldn't realize, oh, I'm in the riverfront. The river is across East Adley right. Road and down in, you know, in its, in its, uh, you know, in, in its place. So, but I think it would be a good thing because in the future they may want to do things and, and they, they may need to file. And there's obviously logical ways to move forward, you know, on, on restoring this historic home. But I, I think that's probably what happened. It probably never even occurred to anybody. Oh, I should check in with with the with the conservation agent on this. So yeah, which is just why I say again, thank you, Lance, for taking the time to no, do this now. Really a lot yeah. of the time, we come up against this stuff when it's already happened, and we're we're left in a trickier enforcement situation, which nobody enjoys. Um, so this is a great path forward um, from our perspective. So thanks. Thank you. And, and from the, tr the tree removal situation, I mean, I also was a little shocked to see the pictures and be like, oh, wow, there was a lot of trees removed because I remember seeing it. It was completely surrounded by trees. Um, I mean, I, 
I don't know how many trees were removed, but I think that that would be a good thing to document in the RDA that's filed to say X number of trees removed, these were the diameters, and also if they could replace a couple of those trees, I think that would be really nice. Yeah. Like I'm not saying near to the house, but maybe on the property, they could do some replanting. And I think it's something, yeah, go ahead. Like, I mean, I think just in the RDA saying we removed this, now we know maybe we shouldn't have here other ideas for a planting plan that can help restabilize the property. Um, it can also benefit, have many other benefits on the property. So yeah. it's not just put the trees back where they were necessarily, but. Um, yeah. And when the growing season starts again, it should, they should be seeding down that area and mulching it as well to make sure that it's getting established with some ground cover. Yep. Yep. The, uh, the landscape work is not part of our scope. And uh, so we haven't had much to say about that with the, with the owner, but um, I will be happy to mention that, you know, we had this discussion and that, uh, um, you know, there are, uh, there's a path forward and uh, it should be cooperative. And they can reach out to Aaron um, and they're for us with questions mm -hmm. as they go. So if they want more detail and have questions, please, like we're here. Okay. All right, so Aaron, do we need to vote for a temporary? I mean, it's not really a, it's sort of an informal. So as long yeah. as, as long as everybody on the board is comfortable with it, I think that's really all we're looking for. Okay. okay. And we'll get the silt fence up in the next couple of days. So that's established and uh, basically it's going to run from the abutters property down East Hadley Road to the driveway and then carry beyond the driveway to the other boundary. Perfect. Okay. Yeah. Got it. Thank you. No All problem. Right. <laughs> All right. Be best of luck over there. Thank yes. you very much. We'll see you soon. Okay. Bye. Bye. Um, All right, I see Mickey Marcus here. Yes. FWCA next on our agenda. Yep. UMass Irrigation. Yes. Okay, Mickey, I'm promoting you to a panelist. All right. Okay, hey, hey everybody. Um, so uh, you, UMass brought to my attention that they have a project they're considering for later in 2022, which is um, adding irrigation to their agricultural learning center. Um, I think this work will fall under the existing O&M notice of intent. It's supposed to come before the commission for your review and any conditions or if you want a separate filing. So I, I just wanted to show you what we have. Um, May I share a screen? Yes, please go ahead. Yeah. Um, okay. So do um, you, you see this? Uh, it's just a Google Earth still image. Um, yeah. So this uh, image is before the Agricultural Learning Center has taken place. It was in this corner. This, this is on uh, North Pleasant Street right here on the left side. And uh, the, up the top of the photo is looking north. Um, anyway, so they have the agricultural learning barn building here. Um, I, I did delineate the wetlands, but they were in 2006, it was 2012, and then again, 2016. And what it is, is there's a drainage swale that runs right down through, through this uh, property. It's a BBW, but it's like a wet meadow, about 20 feet wide. Um, and at this point here, it becomes a stream channel and eventually crosses North Pleasant Street in a culvert. So anyway, they, they want to um, add irrigation to all these crop lands here. So they would take um, an irrigation line, bring it up uh, the fields and then have cross laterals 
Um, I'm pretty sure the cross laterals will end up being within 100 feet of this drainage soil. Um, as a phase two of the project, um, they'd like to go across where they have the tractor trail. So it would, this tractor trail crosses that swale and they have, they're starting to develop more um, crops. They have a pollinator garden. They have um, some grapes and blueberries. So they're starting to develop more work on this side of the project. So the idea is, is basically they're doing a shallow irrigation line, um, just gets pulled behind a, a ditch, which it just gets covered over and mulched right on top of it. Um, there, there's no permanent impact, but they, you know, they put a, a plastic irrigation hose in this area. So I, I guess there's two questions. I, I think that uh, for the north side of the field, there's no wetland alteration. I think uh, there may be minimal work within the 100 foot buffer. Um, for the phase future work, they do the phase two, um, they would put the irrigation line in the tractor trail, but it, that trail does cross out a drainage soil. So you probably wanna look at that more closely if they do that in the future, but that, that, that's the project. So Did they recently add a um, on the uh, if you're looking south on the main road coming in there, they add recently like a not a wellhead, but it's like they added there's like another like water pipe of there some is, kind. Yeah, there is. Um, it, it, I'm not sure exactly where it is, but it's somewhere in here. Yeah. Um, and they had a, a, an irrigation contractor look at that irrigation pipe versus the building. And uh, they determined that there was more pressure or was a better, I, I'm not sure of the reasons, but uh, the irrigation contractor said it would better off coming off the main building. Before we do more questions. So Aaron, what is really in front of us here? Like, are we making a decision about whether this first phase of the project fits under the umbrella of the of the O&M kind of permit is that right so if you guys think it should fall under the umbrella um, of the of the O&M plan and and from my perspective I don't have a problem with that for the phase one um, I do have a couple questions I guess I mean the first thing is if they're going to do it underneath that permit then they would need to post a DEP file number sign on the site um, to make sure that it's clear that it's falling under that permit. The other thing is um, an erosion control inspection. And I realize that this is cropland, um, but if there may be appropriate places to install erosion control if there, if there is um, uh, disturbance from um, the laying of the, of the lines. Um, the phase two, I, if they're crossing, um, BVW, intermittent stream, swale, whatever you want to call it, that would require a separate filing, in my opinion. I agree um, that. So that I've already, I've already mentioned to Mickey. Um, I guess the one question I have is, Mickey, the source of this water is like town, town water. Okay, it's not coming yeah. out. It's not being pumped out of any resource area or anything like that. Okay. Town water. Yeah, yeah, so that was where I was, what I, kind of my responses to it. Yeah, I agree. I think the, as described, phase one, I'm comfortable with. I agree with erosion control inspection, just to be careful. Um, and, but then phase two, I think we would have to handle as another, a permit. Yeah. I see Dave, your hand is raised. Go ahead. Muted. Oh, you're muted, Dave. There we go. Um, yeah, just a couple of quick questions. Um, I guess one, Mickey, you refer to the the path of water as a drainage swale. I don't know is anything under our bylaw really, I don't know as we have drainage swales, right? So it's really an intermittent stream. Is that what it is? It's a BVW. It's a wet meadow. Yeah, a wet meadow with, with water moving east to west um, toward, right. the mill, toward the Mill River. And I guess... My only question is, and I remember this, you know, when, when UMass first proposed putting, you know, the, the um, agricultural center here is, is kind of what's the long-term protection for that BVW? 
to me, this is a wonderful opportunity. You know, it's a demonstration farm, you know, just, you know, and, and obviously, you know, I'm supportive, the commission is supportive of agriculture, but what's, what's the long-term plan for that BVW? It, it seems like there's kind of expansion, I was going to call it creep, but that has a negative connotation, but there's expansion of the fields, but what's to protect that BVW over time, I guess is my question. Um, and isn't this a wonderful, if this is a demonstration farm for sustainable organic growing, shouldn't it also, you know, are there signs that say, hey, let's protect this BVW? Is there, you know, an understanding and operation and, and, and maintenance plan for the farm that says we should protect that BVW? Because it all goes, it all goes west into the stream, ultimately into the Mill River. So I'm just putting that out there. What, what's the plan long term to protect that BVW? Yeah, I, I don't know the answer to that, David. So, uh, but I, I will bring that to the attention of, of UMass, and mm -hmm. um, they can have some conversations uh, yeah. with the commission. But I, I don't have an answer to that. Also, if I'm not mistaken, where the cursor is um, to the to the south of where the the ag center is now, if you go in that that right there, I think that's a created wetland. If I'm not mistaken, I think I think. Some project in I remember either expanded, either created or expanded that wetland. I think it was a, a demonstration wetland some 15 years ago. Well, it worked. Um, it, so so there is there is a stream this there is a stream channel in this area. It's mm -hmm. uh, a very nice wetland and it drains uh, under uh, North Pleasant Street. So if, if it was a created wetland, it, it worked. Yeah, I think maybe it was there and then. Then, then there was some permit to expand it. I'm not sure, but great. Thank you. So, so to, to recap, if, if I can just rephrase what some of the comments were, was they should put up a DEP file number in front of the farm center, uh, let the commission know when the work's going to be done and have uh, erosion control inspections. Um, um, only work on the north side of the swale, no work crossing the swale, and speak to the commission about any future work that they want to do in the south part of the area. That seems like a great, that sounds like a great recap to me. The only thing I'd add is just bringing up with UMass, like is there a long-term plan and any educational opportunities associated with that um, BBW? It could be a, a good opportunity. Yeah, it'd be nice to put in some buffer there, some plantings or something to protect it, create some vegetated buffer around it or, you know, some way to, I don't know, I don't know what it looks like because I haven't been out on this site before, but I'm excited to go out there and have a look at it. Yeah, I, I will tell you that even in the summer, uh, it, it's wet. Um, I think the reason it's there is nobody's been able to farm it, so it's, they just stay away from this about a 20 foot wide wet drainage swell, which, which is a BBW. Okay. But even at the very least, Mickey, having said that, maybe it would be good to monument that so future generations of UMass farmers kind of get to know, hey, you know, because um, I, I have seen many wetlands kind of drained on agricultural fields and there's ways to do it. Um, so okay. it might be good to monument it. Okay. Thanks, Mickey. All right, appreciate thank you all for your time. Appreciate heads it. Up. Yeah, appreciate the heads up okay. and the details. At all. Good night. Good night. All right. You guys want to jump into some other business? Yeah. All right. Good. I'm just looking back. Um. So go back to minutes, Aaron, or you go ahead. Oh, there you are. Yeah. Um, this just administrative piece, if we could, I, I would feel completely comfortable if somebody wants to make a motion approving multiple sets in one motion, as opposed to having to make an individual motion for each of these. Um, the other thing is that the, the bottom two are, um, the minutes from the subcommittee meeting that I just typed up, they're very like a one page kind of um, 
brief overview. Um, I'm not sure that the commission really needs to approve those, Dave. I'm not. I would defer to you, but I mean, my thinking was more so: do we have the commission's approval to post them on the website? Um, but it's up to you, Dave. I don't know what your guidance is on that. If we should have a motion to approve them. Um, again, I think I think if you did a motion to approve this, the following sets of minutes. Mm -hmm. be fine if the commission's comfortable with us. Okay. Um, so with the regulation subcommittee though, that's not a public meeting. Yeah, it is. Yep. Oh, it's, it a, is. it's a legally posted meeting. Yep. We post oh, agendas okay. and yeah. they're recorded and they're the, oh. they're posted on our webpage. Okay. The, the only question I'd have there is should the entire commission be approving minutes that they weren't they aren't and never attend versus should the members of the regulation committee approve those, vote to approve those separately? That would be fine with me. I mean, I, I think that's, that's reasonable. more logical to me. So okay. why don't we do two? So we're looking for okay. a motion to approve the minutes uh, from 422, 20, 9, 17, 20, 5, 13, 20, 10, 23, 19, 12, 22, 21, and 1, 12, 22. There's a guy in a down blue vest, I think, is lined up for this one. Oh. I was hoping. I was hoping. Go, Larry. Larry, you're <laughs> muted. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> the only thing I've got about that is the fact that the, the, the one error that I've mentioned to Aaron already is that on 12 21 my name is not on the list. That'll get changed, I'm sure, by Eric. Error. Yes, I'll correct that error. Is Otherwise, that error? I recommend we approve these. All right, looking for a second. Seconded. All right, voice vote. Uh, Fletcher. Aye. Larry. Aye. Michelle. Aye. Leroy. Aye. Laura. Aye. And I'm an aye. And then we're looking for a motion from Michelle or Leroy to approve the regulation subcommittee meeting, meetings from 117.22 and 121.22. So moved. Second, no, I can't. Second. <laughs> All right, and voice vote, Leroy. Uh, Michelle. Aye. All right, approved. All right, great. Nice. Um, uh, an emergency certification request uh, for um, uh, 38 Chapel. This was one that um, I had kind of, um, oh, I guess the pictures are on OneDrive. Um, this is one that I had kind of prefaced you guys on quite a while ago. We had another um, emergency cert a few houses up from here. Um, there is a huge stand of dead, very tall dead, pines that it appears have been destroyed by like the emerald um emerald pine borer um and they're a real safety issue so here's a good picture showing them um so they requested to remove basically 10 of these from their backyard a lot of these are just falling on people's houses right now um hmm. so um I didn't have any problem with the removal and conditioned it and it was um, approved by Dave. So we just need a vote to ratify this emergency certification. Those are almost like the telephone poles that, that uh, <laughs> right? <I'm wondering>. Yeah. <laughs> I saw one of them that fell on somebody's deck, uh, back deck, and it was definitely scary. Um, it damaged the deck, it, it broke the deck, so. Why can't we, why can't we use them for bridges? Because they're dead. <laughs> they're, they're, red pine. Dead. they're red pine or white pine? Red yeah. pine looks like red. Yeah, I like red pine. It I looks do like look a diorama pine. from Harvard Forest. To be honest. <laughs> it does. So. It's a little copper guy down there, you know, wrapped in co copper coil. Are there draft horses right. at Muddy Brook Farm is really the question here. Oh. Um, okay, so we just need a motion to ratify this emergency cert for... Ooh, chapel. So move. 38, 38. Chapel Road. We have a, okay, do we have a second? A second. Thanks, Laura. Voice vote. Um, Roy? Aye. Laura? Aye. Larry? 
Aye. Michelle. Aye. Fletcher. Aye. I'm an I. Awesome. Group. Um, okay, so this one's a little tricky. Um, you guys might remember this one, um, single family home construction, 74 East Leverett Road. Let me pull up pictures. Um, oh. Very nice gentleman constructed this house. He, I did inspections at this place regularly. Um, I was out there, gosh, uh, because, because East Leverett Road was happening, the, um, sewer line replacement was happening. So I was out there um, quite a bit looking at this um, project. And he did send me these photos. Um, it looks like they established a pretty good grass um, in the leach field area. It's really around the house. And it's tough because he's closing in like three days. But um, the site isn't established with vegetation yet. Like I wouldn't even on this site approve removal of erosion controls <laughs> yet, um, but he's requesting a request for certificate of compliance. And I, I did tell him that I thought it was a long shot, but um, he is hoping you guys will consider it. Um, I, oops, wrong one, sorry. Um, I was out there and did an inspection. Where am I? Um, and I, took some photos. My photos um, are a little more um, up to date. They did do some measures to try to correct. There was, and I'm, I'm really glad that we, the commission, to be honest, stuck to uh, the, uh, having the swale along the driveway because it really has been catching a lot of the runoff and preventing the, a rill basically forming right along the edge of that driveway. So especially with snow on the ground, that has really served its purpose. And so I think that was a very, very smart um, design feature for the commission to require as it's functioning as it should. I don't see any issues as far as violations on the site. Um, everything they've planted, they've, they've put together um, a, let me get there. Um, there's a planting area, if I can get to it. There it is. Um, so you can see the stones and they've done a planting area in the area, that's their riverfront restoration um, that has the plantings in it. Um, there's no areas that are unstable. There was, it, uh, it, it, in the, um, initially, up in this area, there was starting to be a little bit of erosion forming on the, um, the uh, area that they had hydro seeded that's up above the stone swale, but they actually repaired the erosion and hydro seeded it again. And now it seems to be holding. Um, but even with that, um, like I said, it's, there's no issues with destability. The site is stable and they, the erosion controls are in place. Everything's functioning, it's mulched, it's seeded but it's just not established um, seed. So, I mean, I'm sure when the growing season begins that the seed is gonna come in and it'll, it'll stabilize, but the question is right now, how to handle the certificate of compliance. Um, yeah, so I share your hesitation, Erin. Um, commissioners, does anyone have any questions or instincts on this one? I'm, I'm hesitant. I mean, kind of the fundamental basis of issuing a compliance is, is the vegetation's taken and grown. So I don't really see how we can do that and certainly set a precedent for doing it again. Seems risky. Yeah. Thanks, Michelle. I think we agree. So in terms of like a process here, is this, they're asking for this because they're switching owners. That's why. Right. So Somebody's purchasing the, the Yeah. Yeah, it's for sale right now. And what I had advised the yeah, um, the owner who's uh, submitting the request is uh, what ha we've done previously on other lots is to put money in escrow um, for the for the buyer, um, so that if something doesn't establish, if there's a problem, if there's a mm -hmm. violation, there's an assurity there. But at the same time, if um, you know, we asked them to come back in at the end of May um, that uh, 
and we issue a certificate of compliance at that point that they could release that bond back to the, the seller. Um, and that was my recommendation to them, but they wanted to run it by you guys and um, see how you felt about it first. I like your idea of the escrow. Mm -hmm. Aaron. I agree. I think it's prudent. Okay. I think it's a great recommendation there. And I, I, given the topography there, given where yeah. the site is, the time of year, I, I don't think there's any way <laughs> to, mm -hmm. to, to just yeah, I definitely right wouldn't. off on that. Yeah, yeah, I wouldn't remove those inversion controls. No. Yeah. Um, okay. We've got to go through the whole spring rains, you know, it, there's a lot of lot of winter left and a lot of spring left to even get to that point where that's vegetated. So yeah, come back when you're mowing the lawn. <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> yeah, no, I think that's a good point. Well, um, that that is all of the other business I have, with the exception of one thing, which I'm going to let Dave um, take the the reins on. Um, if you if that's okay with you, Dave. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I I think. So this is the only last business we have, right? It is. So, yep. so yeah, we just want to take a few minutes. I, I know it's still early, so we don't want to belabor this, but we wanted to just give you a, a brief kind of introduction. Aaron and I have been having some great, very productive conversations about land use policy. And, you know, Aaron has been, you know, I got to give her um, just heap on the, the praise and, and credit to her for for being um, persistent with me and also being an incredible researcher to pull together all of these rather disparate documents and policies and, and, and prior, prior uh, actions of, of former Conservation Commission uh, members and, and, and staff to really kind of pull some things together. And we're not gonna get really deep into it tonight. We just wanted to give you a little flavor of, of where we're trying to go. And, and what we want to do is try to pull together um, with you, obviously, with you, for you, and for the land in Amherst, a comprehensive land use policy. And so what I can say is through the years, and, and the prior director of, of uh, conservation, Pete Westover, was here for 30 years. And, and honestly, there really wasn't a comprehensive land use policy for conservation land at all. Um, back in those days, it was, you know, Pete was an ecologist and a, and a land use planner. And way back then, kind of whatever Pete and the commission worked out was what happened on the land. And I think so much has changed um, our knowledge of, of, of ecology, our, our, our knowledge of land management, and the world has changed as we've really come to grips with global climate change and, and the impacts that that will have on all of us, both human and ecology and, and critters and, and plants and, and trees. And so Aaron, you know, with my en enthusiastic uh, support began to pull together a whole host of things, uh, old regulations, dog use policy, agricultural use policy, rules and regulations for community gardens, um, and the list goes on and on. And so what we wanted to do is give you a little flavor of what we'd like to bring to you in, in your meetings. And our goal would be to, in the end to really have one document, one place where the commission can come, where staff can come, and honestly, where the public can come to understand what rules and regulations and what policies we are following to both manage the land, to acquire new land. And when, when a new piece of property, for instance, Hickory Ridge comes into the town, how do we look at that and how do we make decisions on how to manage that land? So let me stop there, Aaron, do you wanna, you know, let me hand it off to you and, and say a little bit more about it because you, you're the one that's dug, really dug into some of these old documents and, and begun to pull out some of the, the, the interesting features of them. Yeah, I mean, it's really just been sort of consolidating them. And then as we consolidate them, trying to come up with, what's missing, where are the holes in this? Um, 
So um, a policy on conservation restrictions, agricultural restrictions, encroachments onto conservation land, liability issues. And like tonight was a great example with um, Adventure East. Um, we have a standard policy like and, and even fees. And that's something um, that that we haven't haven't um, brought into this policy yet as far as fees or donations or anything like that, but this is to get like a really strong foundation underneath um, in writing that we we can start reviewing and adding to and, you know, sort of modifying to have it be the framework that we want it to be. Um, land use applications, sort of what our standard expectations are, also licensing for agricultural and <laughs> as we'll see in the coming weeks, general land use licenses, because this has come up um, with a program running um, at Amethyst Brook that's like an educational program for kids that was never previously licensed. And so we're helping them to become licensed so they can continue to operate. And so stay tuned for that. Um, but also leases, enforcement, um, you know, uh, Another another factor that I thought of sort of as we were drafting it is dam maintenance or dam removal, like our policy on that. So um, it'll be, it started out of us thinking, oh, it'll be like one or two pages, super short and sweet. But then as, as we started to tease it apart, we're like, oh, we need this, we need this, we need this. And so it might be about 10 pages at the end of it, but it's going to be a really great document that we can point to whenever a land use application comes in, whenever a license comes through, whenever there's an encroachment, whenever there's an enforcement issue. And I think that'll be a really great thing for us to have. Yeah. And, and if I could just add, you know, there's a couple of great examples like the Brian, the gentleman who was before you a few minutes ago, there's a, there's a, there's a program that, that his organization wants to offer. It's a for-profit or it's a nonprofit. It's a for-profit or nonprofit, depending. I think, I think they're a for-profit and they're charging a fee. So what is our policy? What is your policy and how does staff um, uh, enforce that policy uh, relative to uh, folks who wanna charge a fee to be out there? Aaron just mentioned on what we believe is a nonprofit organization running kind of a preschool, if you will, program out at Amethyst Brook. We've, we've made well-intentioned attempts to license a couple of areas for use by farmers. Unfortunately, I think, and, and unfortunately, I think our efforts have been good on the, on the front side, but not good on the back side. In other words, what do we require of those licensees? Do we require an annual, just a, a report? How did it go? What worked out at Amethyst Brook or Haskins Meadow? Do we require um, a site visit by one of the staff to look at what's happening out at Amethyst Brook or anywhere else we're licensing for, for farmland? Um, and we also want to include kind of the rules and regulations. It's really a good time, I think, in 2022 for the commission to look at what are your rules? Are you comfortable with the rules for dog dogs on leash and dogs off leash. Are you comfortable with, with, or should we look at, I believe we should look at things like camping. Is that something we want to allow? Historically, we did allow camping. I have pretty strong feelings about where I'd like to see the commission go, but what about camping on conservation land? What about horseback riding on conservation land? Um, and what tools do we have to enforce those rules and regulations? Right now, there really aren't any. When somebody encroaches on conservation land, let's say they take down some trees on down land or they dump a bunch of you know, yard waste or whatever, we really don't have a lot of teeth. Um, and we, you have the authority that you can um, empower me to, to use, but there really is no monetary penalty for doing things on conservation land that people shouldn't be doing. So these are all the kinds of topics we wanna we want to engage you on. And it probably will take a few months to work through this. We anticipate a, a, a number of public meetings or parts of your meetings being public and encouraging people to come and, and engage with us. And then there would need to be a public hearing at some point to kind of ratify where you wanna go with some of this policy and, and rules and regulations. 
I will say that Brad and other um, you know assistant land managers through the years have been kind of frustrated because they just they don't know. There's no one place that they can go to gather all this information. Also, if we want the support of the Amherst Police Department, um, they need to know what are the rules and regulations that you have promulgated. I'll give you one quick example. Out behind my house is the Ken Cutterback Trail. Some years ago, my neighbors called the police and said there's somebody with a big bonfire out on the Ken Cutterback Trail on conservation land. And the police said, can you point me to, they said to um, the neighbors, can you point me where it says you can't have a fire on Amherst conservation land? And they really, there was nowhere easily, easily easy to find that we could point, that the neighbor could find on our website or anywhere else that said you can't have a fire on conservation land. So the police were really hard pressed to enforce that. So small examples, but they come up repeatedly. Do we have another slide, Aaron? Oh, okay. So that's, so, so we've been working a little bit with town council and we'd love to, you know, I don't know if this is a subgroup, a, a subcommittee of the commission that would like to work more closely with us or whether you're comfortable with us kind of bringing uh, more detail to this, um, you know, and maybe taking 20 minutes to half an hour of some of your upcoming meetings to really lay this whole thing out for you. I like the idea of keeping it small, you know, tight and succinct as possible, right? Just so, like, as you're saying, use it something to point at and something for, for quick reference. Mm -hmm. Important to get a dog down. I don't want to bring up another thing on here, but have you at all been approached by um, any big companies about carbon, like carbon credits on conservation land? Um, so specifically selling the carbon um, on conservation lands for a profit so that uh, polluters can buy those credits and pollute more? We, we, we have not, we've not been formally approached, no. although I do know other municipalities yeah, like it's, we have Westfield, I believe has Springfield sold. Watershed. Yeah. It's happened. It's happening. It's always been watershed, I heard. Yeah, so we and they're going to come not. after, and they're going to be calling you about like urban tree, like street trees too. Yeah, but like that, like having done so many like carbon credits before, like that doesn't make any sense because this is already conserved land. So you're not adding any value. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, it only counts. It only is a true carbon credit if you're actually doing something new that captures carbon that you otherwise would not do. Like the UN has like rigorous standards here so these are like bs carbon credit people oh yeah but it's like but, google and microsoft like they're an yeah. apple so let me well let me let me throw a little wrinkle i'm just saying that it could be more. coming at you for land policy ideas so so the town of amherst for instance we between conservation land and and um watershed protection water supply protection we own let's call it between five and 6,000 acres of land. That's a lot. All of that land is potentially open for logging. Mm -hmm. We can log conservation land. There is nothing that prohibits mm -hmm. us from logging conservation land or uh, watershed supply or watershed protection land. So the research I've done and people I've talked to, part of the carbon credit um, program mm -hmm. is that you put a Sure. permanent no touch no yeah. but yep. restriction and that is in my understanding where you get the credit the from. that's right yeah so that was the only you know kind of difference laura i guess in, yep. in my understanding yeah um, if that's true if, yeah okay. that would make sense along with a whole another litany of criteria but yes and yeah. we and we do log our watershed lands in my time with, with the town, we have never logged any part of any conservation area that I can think of. I know prior to me getting here, we did do some logging, very modest, um, on some, some conservation land. But anyway, I, I think, you know, it certainly may come up, Fletcher, we may get approached. Hey, I'm just letting you know, that's gonna, that stuff is in the pipeline. And you can actually continue to log and sell carbon credits at the same time. And it's, gonna, yeah. it's coming right down to people down to 10 acre parcels. So backyard landowners can still have, you have to have a baseline. Anyway, I'm just saying in terms of, because sure. you're talking about land use policy here, mm. this is yeah. big and it's happening yep. now. And yeah. it's just 
it's just something to consider because um, yeah. Yeah, I'm sure someone's going to ask you about it. And you referenced it's in the pipeline, which. Yeah, it's back, back, back to the original request about the land use planning things. One of the things I like about it is the fact that it allows us to do public education. I, you know, my neighbors, my, my colleagues don't really know what the uh, Conservation Commission is responsible for and so forth. So something like this, even your beginning presentation like this could go on our web page in terms of the Conservation Commission to talk about what we are and what we are going to do. Mm -hmm. Bonfires. So with, with your support and, and, and encouragement, I think what Erin and I would do, and she's already made great strides on this, we would, I think a next step would be to bring to you kind of an outline of the various sections with a little meat on the bone, shall we say, um, to at least give you uh, more than we gave you in three or four slides to kind of lay out as Aaron has yeah. some of the major headings and then maybe some of the subheadings. I like, I like that. And I then like maybe, that. maybe a timeline for going through them. Clearly some of them are more uh, charged, if you will. I mean, talking about camping on conservation land, I don't know as we're gonna get a hundred people to talk about camping on conservation land, but when we talk about dog regulations, that may get some interest from people. So I think we do need to think carefully about how we I go agree. through the various sections. No, I, I agree, but, but, part of, but, the other, but I think the important part about this is the public education. I mean, yes, we have to have this, but I think it's also important for the public education. Mm -hmm. And Larry, just so that you know, I, I did take what you said because a couple of meetings ago, you had mentioned like all these projects like the Conservation Commission is working on. And I created on the Conservation Commission page and I'm gonna um, find it for you guys really quickly to show you. Um, I created a page which is kind of like uh, special projects that the Conservation Commission is working on. And I um, include on there um, things like this. And, and these are things, this as well as the, the other work that, um, I'll just, the other work that we're doing with the bylaw. Um, so like the, the bylaw um, committee work and then the um, open space. Um, so can you guys see the, this yep. conservation yep. so under other wetlands projects um i just i've just started sort of populating this but um it's got um oh, the right. kestrel land trust videos on here um the macro invertebrate studies that have been going on at umass are on here the stream flow studies of the tan brook that christine hatch has been helping with and then other projects around town um and these, <laughs> this is a work in progress that like the food bank farm dedication, Hickory Ridge, you know, there's, they're from different site visits. Um, like this was the Hickory Ridge event, uh, Ridge events that we did. Um, and I still have to, I'm, I'm working with, with uh, Brianna to get the photos on well, there. I mean, but part, part, of, part of the other thing of this is that, you know, a lot of people in town don't know what we are. Yeah. You know, even, even in the beginning of that page where you talk about the Conservation Commission, some statements about what our mandate is and what we're doing, the idea of public education side of this. Yeah, I mean, I do, I, I have been modifying our website. Um, I'm, not being, I'm not being critical. Yeah, I'm no, not, no, I'm, it's, I'm it's looking excellent. looking forward to the positive side of this, that, that we should, we should, we should be more out front about telling our neighbors, et cetera, what we're doing so they can help us. I mean, yeah. you know, people see things and they report into you, but if they don't know what they've got to report, how do they do it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've definitely been working to try to better convey that, Larry, but it's, the point is, is well taken for sure. Um, yeah, I think Michelle, have you? Had Thanks, Jen. Um, I just want to say I think this is really exciting, as everyone yeah. obviously does too. But um, I do a lot of land use application, legal, and like on conservation lands with very sensitive species and habitats, um, with like lots of stipulations and all the legalese that goes around with it. So I'd be happy to, you know, subcommittee or have um, side conversations or anything in the development of that and um, a lot of experience with easements and conservation restrictions on conservation land. So mm -hmm. 
that's sort of my my steez and i'd be happy to contribute and M michelle just so that Thank you know because michelle. michelle and i had talked about this offline was the plantings um i did incorporate a section in there on plantings and any plantings done on conservation land must be um native plantings um but i do think michelle made an excellent comment which is like dpw department of public works like their project that they did um over on the the mill lane um yeah. viewing platform and stuff like i know that we required of them that they do native plantings but like on other sites around town like the playgrounds or you know other other locations where they're putting in plantings are those native plantings and what are the plantings mm -hmm. and stuff you know that so that was interesting it's not it's not related to land use policy but it is a important you know component of what we do in town i look i look out my front door and i see three invasive plants that my neighbors don't know any better about well maybe they do now but i mean you know those kind of things yeah so the one thing i know we want to wrap jen but the one thing i think we do need to to really focus on and and i think once once you see kind of the outline, call them chapters, call them sections, major headings, oh, yeah. is being realistic about how long it might take us. No, I agree. Yeah, yeah. yeah. actually, a, this is not a this that's is right. not a reading thing. This might take us a couple of months to work through. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Um, yeah. So also, if I can get a word <laughs> edgewise here, I think the the my comment is just yes, I match everyone's enthusiasm for this. I think. Um, there will be some benefit to getting something in place, even if it's not perfect. So we know some of the sticky issues that we're constantly coming back to. Maybe we can prioritize those, those for some, a little bit of a living document um, to begin with, just because I could really see getting super mm -hmm. bogged down in some of these for all of the reasons that Michelle just stated. Some of this gets very complicated very quickly. Um, so I don't know if there's a way to prioritize or um, come up with like a schedule that allows us to have something in place sooner rather than later. Um, I just, yeah, I'm sensitive to, you know, it's we're in the quiet season now, it's gonna get busier we're all busy. We're already asking for Michelle's ex any, you know, whatever volunteered made time um, for the bylaw subcommittee. So um, yeah, 100% support, but 100% support prioritizing issues that we know are recurring as opposed to like getting into things that don't come up as often like campfires and camping. Um, yeah, yeah. No, let us, like that. yeah, that's a, that's a really good point. Let us take a look at the, the major sections and and give some thought to that because I you know I, I hear what you're saying but something like just I don't want to go into detail now but something like dog regulations yeah is yeah. probably in the top three most controversial thing that we will talk about and although I'd love to tackle that one there needs to be a <laughs> lot of lead time and and yeah. that's a big right. one and and we have to really roll up our sleeves on something like that. If, right. if we're going to touch it, it's kind of a third rail. So. Yeah, absolutely. And so is there, I mean, this might be a question for even the town council, you know, is there a way to say, okay, here's our, you know, land use policy section one approved or so, like something well, where we can piecemeal approve this? I don't, think the town, I don't think the town council has anything to do with this. Okay. This yeah. is all yours. Um, as far as I know, we can check with legal counsel, but there may be elements, but I can't think of any off the top of my head that need to go to the town council. This is 98% you, I think. I don't, you know, we can look into whether, I think you even have the ability to um, uh, institute fines, you know? So so let's, let us, we'll do a little more work. Our hope is to at least bring you the outline in two weeks. It might be four weeks, but let us, do a little work on that. Okay, great. Um, did anyone else, any other commissioners have any comments or questions? Leroy and Laura, this has been an enthusiastic discussion. I just want to make sure everyone has a chance to chime in. Okay, thank you, Dave and Aaron, for taking the time on this. Um, it's perfect timing. So you anticipated it so well. <laughs> really appreciate it. Um, so I think that was 
the end of the agenda, Aaron? Yes. Yep. That was okay. all I had tonight. Okay. You know, I can move to adjourn. Yeah, I think I think so. I move to adjourn. Second. Second. There you go. All in favor? Aye. Or um, Aye. Michelle. Aye. Larry. Aye. Laura. Aye. Leroy. Aye. Fletcher. Aye. I'm an aye. Good night, everybody. Nice to see you. Good job, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, you guys so much. Great.